In this video we're going to be uh, just looking at function notation and evaluating functions. So just do examples 1 through 4. Here's example 1, example 2, example um, 3, uh, these inputs, and example uh, 4, we'll use these inputs, okay? So let's begin with uh, a wage function where imagine you get paid 950 per hour and uh, it costs 25 dollars to commute to work so your wage you could have a wage function and it's pronounced this way this would be pronounced uh, w of x equals 950 x minus 25 so this part is w of x and the parentheses does not mean multiply. The parentheses is part of the function notation. The W represents the output wage, and X would represent the input. In this case, it's number of hours you work. Okay. So the reason we use this notation is, um, oh, it, it's not a big deal. It just it kind of helps to show. Sometimes it's nice to show the input that you're kind of putting into the function and then um, calculating it so you, you can basically show the input and the output in one line as as such like this basis so first we've got to calculate it though so in place of x we have 40 means if you work 40 hours what will your wage be so we go 950 times the input minus 25 and the input is 40 so we plug 40 in for x and then we calculate that right just use a calculator maybe okay so if you calculate that you get uh, 355 so this would be now pronounced W uh, of four, uh, W of 40 or wage given uh, input of 40 equals 355 dollars so in other words if you work 40 hours you get paid three hundred and fifty five dollars and the reason we use the function I mean we could just th there's two ways of doing it the way we've been doing it you could just write okay x equals forty comma w equals three hundred and fifty five in other words I work forty hours I get paid three hundred and fifty five dollars or you could do it this way and this is using function notation so it's just a it's a slight difference but you've just got to remember that the parentheses does not mean multiply it's just part of the function notation and and this just means your wage after working 40 hours is three fifty five dollars okay. so just for former goal to calculate what would the wage be if I work the usual 40 plus t another extra t hours added on okay so if the formula is w of x equals 950 x minus 25 this is going to be um, 950 times x minus 25 950 times the input when the input in this case is 40 plus t so instead of just plugging in uh, 40 in place of x I'm going to plug in 40 plus t so I'm going to plug 40 plus t in there see that okay and I'll go ahead and calculate that nine I've got to do the distributive property right so I'll go 950 times 40 plus 950 t minus 25 okay and go ahead and calculate that <coughs> and add like terms and see what you get So again, of course, this will give you 380 plus 950t minus 25, which of course is 355 plus 950t. Okay. So to just to write this out, just for fun, just just so we can practice function notation, wage of 40 plus t hours gives us three hundred and fifty five dollars plus nine fifty times t does that make sense so imagine our t represented overtime what we've calculated is that if I work t 
three T hours of overtime, I get the usual 355 plus 950 times T. Well, this wouldn't really be overtime, would it? Because you'd get usually get paid more per hour. But just imagine if you just put in extra hours that weren't overtime. Anyway. Okay. That mightn't be too hard to imagine these days. Surface area of a sphere, A given R equals 4 pi R squared. Radius of the Earth is 3,960 miles on average. Uh, it's different in different parts of the Earth, but it's about that on average. So figure out the surface area of the Earth. Okay. So the function, or the formula, the function here is A, the area, given the radius of a sphere, is 4 pi r squared. So we should be able to approximate the um, surface area of the Earth now, and instead of r, we're just going to plug in um, 3960, okay? And our formula is 4 pi r squared, so it's going to be 4, then times pi, and then r squared. So the r in this case is 3960, right? So we just plug in 3960 and then we square that, right? So we can uh, plug that in the calculator and calculate it. Oh, I guess we could just you could if if you want to be accurate, your calculator might have a button where pi is. Um, you might be familiar that pi is, is approximately 3.14. I guess we could just plug that in. No big deal, right? And with the order of operations, order of operations says in this case we have to do parentheses first and then multiply. That's PEMDAS, remember that? Order of operations, you've got to do exponents and then multiply. So we need to do the exponents on this. That is uh, 3960 squared, okay? which gives uh, 15681600 okay and then we just multiply all these together so we get approximately 19696 uh, 0896. I'm gonna, because I rounded the 3.14 down, I'm just gonna round that up to uh, 1. Uh, it's the nearest thousand, actually. Okay, so I'm just rounding that to the nearest thousand. Then put some commas in there. Okay, and this would be square miles. MI squared or square miles. So the area surface area of the earth uh, surface area given that a radius is 3960 miles is approximately this number of miles okay so um, that's just an example of a function um, just for fun let's see what would happen if we were getting the area of 2r now 2r means twice the radius, twice some radius, so whatever radius it is, okay? So um, the formula is a of r equals 4 pi r squared. I guess we could, uh, I guess we should probably write that down again. a of r equals 4 pi r squared. But what, how would I calculate a area of 2r, twice the radius? In fact, let's make it easier. How about 2a? Area of 2a. If, if a was a was a, one partic a particular radius of some sphere, what would twice the, the radius be? Well, we would go 4 pi and then where the variable is, you just put parentheses and then you square it. So you'd plug in 2a. Okay. Now calculate this. What does that give you? Well, just always be careful. I mean, the squared is touching the parentheses, so it's always the safest bet is to just write it out like that. Okay, and 2a two, two times 2a, that's 2 times 2 is 4. a times a is a squared. So what I have is 4pi times that, 4pi times that, 
and now we can calculate because 4 times 4 is 16 so that's 16 pi a squared right so we find that a area of 2a equals 16 pi a squared now um, we know that um, Anyway, but basically, if, if 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 you had a particular radius, it is um, four pi, the radius squared, and the air surface area is. But if you kind of double that radius, you end up with sixteen pi a squared. So that's basically four times the the surface area. So if 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 the Earth is this size, and then you take a planet that has um, twice the radius like that the surface area will be four times the surface area of the earth even though the planet will look kinda twice as uh, wide but it'll have a surface area four times the size anyway example three so here's a random function that doesn't mean anything h of p equals negative three p minus two how would we calculate h of four well we would do this negative 3 times parenthesis minus 2 and if I wanted to calculate h of 0 I would go negative 3 times parenthesis minus 2 the trick is wherever you see the variable in the formula you just draw, write a parenthesis and then all you have to do is plug in the input and calculate it but it's this is very important to write this out neatly to make sure you don't make mistakes because as you know, uh, math questions and math books and math tests are always trying to um, give you questions that, that you may make mistakes on if you don't write out clearly. So anyway, so negative 3 times 4, that gives me negative 12. And then I have to subtract 2. Uh, I'm in debt $12. I subtract $2. Now I'm in debt even further, right, by 14. So calculate this one, negative 3 times 0 minus 2. Negative 3 times 0 is 0. And 0 subtract 2. I have 0 dollars, I subtract 2, I'm in debt by 2. 0 subtract 2 is negative 2, right? What about this one, h of negative 2? Once again, use the formula, okay? h of p equals negative 3p minus 2. So we've got to go negative 3 times the input minus 2. In this case, the input is negative 2. So I just plug that in for where P was, right? Wherever you see P, you just draw a parentheses, write a parentheses, and you plug in the input. Okay, now negative 3 times negative 2 is 6, and I've, so I've got 6 minus 2, which is 4, right? What about h of r plus 2? Well, start the same. Negative 3 times the input minus 2. The, and always put parentheses where you saw the variable, right? And then you just plug in where, whatever that input is. In this case, it's r plus 2. So we just take, take that and we just plug it in for, the, for p, okay? So we just plug in r plus 2. And then we just calculate that. So go ahead and calculate that. Add like terms and all that. So you'll distribute negative 3. You'll get negative 3r minus 6. And then we still have minus 2, right? So that gives only one r term, negative 3r. Now negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. Six negatives and two negatives, eight negatives, right? So press pause if you need to. Do this one yourself. H of A minus one. So I want you to do it by yourself. You know, now's the time to make a mistake. And then you'll hopefully learn this uh, and be able to do the homework, okay? So please press pause and try it. This is the important part. You trying it yourself. That's what will help you learn, right? Okay, I hope you've tried it. So I've got to plug this in for P. 
So I go because the, the formula is h of p equals negative 3p minus 2. I always plug this in here, okay? So I go negative 3 times the input minus 2. Now the input happens to be a minus 1. So I plug that in here, a minus 1. See that? Now I distribute the negative 3. Negative 3 times a is negative 3a. Negative 3 times negative 1 is plus 3. And I still have to subtract 2. So I'll subtract 2, and that gives negative 3a. Now 3 minus 2 is just plus 1. Okay. What about h of 5a? And h of 4x? h of 5a, negative 3 times the input minus 2, right? And same with this one, negative 3 times the input minus 2. Once you write this down with the parentheses, then all you have to remember is to plug in the input. Like that. And then calculate it, right? So this is, did you get this one? This is negative 15a minus 2, right? And this one? You're just plugging in the input. And that gives negative 12x minus 2. And again, they're not like terms, so that's the answer. You just stop, you're, you're done. This is, these are not like terms, you can't add them together, right? Example 4, we've got f of x, which is the most common function you ever see, is f of x. So f, parenthesis x, once again, I, I guess we should write this down. It's pronounced f of x. Okay, whereas this last one, h parenthesis p, was pronounced h of p, h of p, right? So this is f of x, is um, f parenthesis x, f of x. Now, and again, it doesn't mean multiply, it's just a type of function notation. Now the formula is 3x squared minus x. So what I need to do is wherever I see x, I need to write a parenthesis. So there's an x here and here. So now I'm going to have two parentheses, one for this x, one for this one. So it's 3 times this thing squared minus this thing, right? And no matter what the input is, let's practice that. You see the way there was an x there, here and here? Let's write a parenthesis and then another parenthesis for that x. Can you do that? Surely this makes sense. Wherever we see an x, we just plug in a parenthesis. So there's two of them. What is done to the parentheses? Well, you've got to multiply it by 3, and you've got to square it, and then you've got to subtract this one, right? So it's 3x squared minus x. It's 3 times the input squared minus the input, right? <coughs> And now to calculate these things, all we have to do is take the number, like the number 4, and plug it into the parentheses. See that? Or take 2 and plug that in here and here. See that? And we have to remember our order of operations, PEMDAS. PEMDAS says what? You do parentheses, then exponents, then multiply, then add or subtract. We don't have anything in parentheses to calculate. I mean, we just have four. Like, that, that's already done, so to speak. So the first thing we need to do is either multiply, subtract, or square. What do we do first? The square, the multiply, or the subtract? The square, right? Yeah, you got a square four. So um, I guess four squared is uh, four times four, right? Which is 16. So I guess I've got three times 16, don't I? minus 4, what does that give? Three sixes is 18, carry the 1. Three ones is 3, and 1 is 4. 48 minus 4, which is 44. Okay. So what we have found is, <coughs> in function notation, f of 4 equals 44. The function, given the input 4, is 44. So, press pause and calculate this one. 3 times 2 squared minus 2 equals what? 
Press pause and do it if you haven't done it yet. Now, 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4, right? So I have 3 times 4, don't I? Then minus 2, which is... Now, once again, I need to multiply and then subtract. Using PEMDAS, you've got to multiply and then subtract, right? So that's 12 minus 2, which is 10. And I can write, for fun, I can just write f of 2 equals 10. The function given the input 2 is 10. Okay, f of 0, 3 times 0 squared minus 0, what's that? It is 3 times 0 minus 0, which is 0 minus 0, which is 0, right? So we have found that f of 0 equals 0, right? Um, f of negative 2, you've got to plug negative 2 in for x. Now remember, you just write out the formula again, and wherever you see x, put parentheses. So I need one here, and I need one here. And it's going to be 3 times the parentheses squared minus the other one. And parentheses are really useful for when you're dealing with negative numbers, like now. Because I can just plug in negative 2 into the parentheses. And straight away I can see that the parentheses help me not make a mistake here. Even though it's subtract x, I've made sure that I now have subtract negative 2. So I have a double negative here. That's important, right? And help me not make a mistake. So that's one reason for parentheses. Uh, negative 2 all squared, let's calculate that. Let's see. Negative 2 times negative 2. What does that give? Negative 2 times negative 2? It is 4, isn't it? So we have 3 times 4 minus negative 2. I guess you could write that out. Now, minus a negative, doesn't that make plus plus? Yep. So that gives me 12 plus positive 2, 12 plus 2, which is 14, right? So please press pause and calculate f of negative 4. Press pause and do that all by yourself, please if you haven't done so yet, f of negative 4. Okay, I'm going to do it now. Wherever we see x, we write parentheses, here and here. Then we write out the rest, 3 times parentheses squared minus parentheses. Then we plug in the input in place of x, so negative 4 gets plugged in here and here. Then we follow the order of operations PEMDAS and calculate it. So I have exponents, uh, exponent on negative 4. And negative 4 squared is negative 4 times negative 4, which is positive 16. So I have 3 times 16 minus negative 4, right? Now negative, negative makes plus, plus. 3 sixteens is 48, so I have 48 plus 4, which is 52, right? Now, f of 2a. Again, wherever I see x, I plug in parentheses. Then I just go 3 times that squared minus that. And then I just plug in 2a. I'll plug it in here and plug it in here, right? Now, I've got to watch out for the squared. The squared is on parentheses. And inside the parentheses is 2a. That means I'm going to have... 2a times 2a, am I? What is 2a times 2a? Two times two is four. A times a is a squared. So we get three times four a squared, and then minus two a here at the back, right? What does that give? Well, we can multiply now. 3 times 4, 12 times a squared, 12a squared, minus 2a. And that's the answer, right? So please press pause and try this one. 
You may make a mistake on it, there's no shame in that, but I'd like you to make your mistakes now. So then you can see the video and try and correct it. Right? If you're going to make mistakes, this is a good time to do it. So please press pause and, and, and work away at it, see what you get. Okay, I'm going to do it now. Hope you've tried it. In place of X, I need to put parenthesis here and one here. So I'm going 3 times this guy squared minus that guy. The input is negative 4A. I've got to plug in there and here, negative 4A. Okay. Now, negative 4A squared with the square touch in parenthesis means that is parenthesis times parenthesis. So I have negative 4a times negative 4a. Now negative times negative is positive. 4 times 4 is 16. And a times a is a squared. So what I have is 3 times 16a squared. Because negative 4a all squared is 16a squared. And then I have minus negative 4a. Okay? a double negative which makes plus plus so this gives me once again 3 times 16 comes up again 48 a squared plus 4 a right 